and Twitch and YouTube. And we're gonna paint some graffiti shirts, just a couple of them. Um, starting with Maddie, M A D D I E. Move this mic out of my way. Have some fun with these. Mm -hmm. Let me sketch out some first lines before I get into it. I'm gonna do cool stuff today. some conversations. What's up guys? Today is a day and we're going to paint on this day because what else is there to do? I relaunched the website. Airbus Customs has been down for like a while. Like two months. And uh, I launched the website back up yesterday it's probably got some errors on it it's probably got some things I need to change and fix and it probably always will be so whatever uh, but I figured now's the time so if you've been waiting holding your breath to order a t-shirt good news now you can do that video is lagging that's not what I want to hear I don't like that to not stream from 19 places. Is it lagging really bad so I just cut the stream off? So I'd rather I'd rather not stream bad quality. Now it's okay. Alright, well hopefully it'll be hopefully hopefully it'll stay okay. If it gets bad again, let me know. And uh I'll do what I can. I don't like that. I want it to be really good. After this shirt is done, I will turn off the other two TikTok and Instagrams. And that should help. I just need a, a hardwired Ethernet out here in the garage. Let's throw a drop shadowy thing on here. These shirts are for sale. Uh, the website's back up. Someone's asking if they're for sale. They are. This is what I do for a living. Um, my website should be in the link slash bio slash wherever it is, depending on where you're watching from. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to make you a shirt.
I never get nervous streaming until for some reason when I stream on Instagram. I don't know why Instagram is the thing. I think it's because back in the day when I would stream on Instagram, I would have like 300 people watching. And that was kind of nerve-wracking. So every time I do it, I'm nervous that there's just going to be a ridiculous amount of people. But I just need to get over it. Am I still doing canvases? I will do some canvases. I haven't in a little while. I'm all about painting some more interesting surfaces. Like some skateboard decks, and canvases, and stuff like that. Something cooler than just a t-shirt. Video quality is normal? Good. Oh no. Being nervous is normal? Yeah. I'm usually not too nervous while I'm painting. I've always had a lot of people watching me paint. I started at the, the theme park. And you can't paint something without a crowd of people watching the whole time, so. Are they on the website or just hit you up again on a DM? Go to the website. The website is back up. Oh, you're talking about canvases. Um, they're not on the website. If you want a canvas, yeah, send me a message and we'll talk about it. It's been a while. I did a couple canvases. Trini Mike, we did a... Blue is better back in the day, and then we did, we did something else, I don't remember. Dale, hi Liv. Spraying with me, knucklehead. What's up? What are you painting, man? Are you doing graffiti stuff or just like airbrush stuff? Let me do an outline on here. I always like to do a white outline around the yellow because it really makes it pop. I'm going to turn off the TikTok and Instagrams to make sure that the YouTube is streaming clearly. You guys, you guys, and you guys, I'm going to turn this off. Go to YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry to cut this short. Carrying on. Now, these shirts are cool because I got some script text on the back. Graffiti style, the word cray. Awesome, dude. dude. Everyone's always lurking, watching me while they do their work or their homework or whatever else they're doing. I appreciate being that entertainment. All right, so same text and colors, Maddie, but in a script style, just fun. M A D I E.
as much as I love doing graffiti style work, um, this script style text is way more satisfying to watch. How to contact me for a custom shirt? Check the description. I'm pretty sure it's in the description. I might have, I might not put it in there. Um, my website is back online. Go to airbrushcustoms.net. You can just Google Airbrush Customs or whatever. And that should pop up. I got a, a whole website dedicated to buying these custom shirts. Been doing this for 10 years. It's all set up. Order whatever you want to. Well, not whatever you want to. You know what I mean. Can I do Old English? I can. It's not a font that I have in a... That I do a lot of, so I don't have a file for that really in my head. I can, but it's really simple. I mean, I would like to develop an alphabet for Old English when I have the time to do that. I do really like the look of Old English, but it's not a style I've done a lot of. Can you paint
anyone like hip hop here, he says. I like hip hop, I don't like mumble rap. I've not been happy with any of the <laughs> the new stuff from anybody. I'm not I don't like the current style. paint boogers going on don't like that this one's getting just a nice thick drop shadow I think Issues. What airbrush do I use? I use um, several different ones. I have a kit that I curated. If you look in the description, there's a link to Spray Gunner. Um, it's a it's a kit that I worked with them to set up, and it's what I would recommend if you're getting started. Um, got everything that you need. It's a great price on everything. Um, it's the same one I'm using right now. Well, not not this one. It's I have a couple of them. Most of the airbrushes that I got, I've had for ten years, five years, some for ten years. Um, but the newer ones are the ones that I'm getting in that kit. I'm suggesting in that kit. I have another issue. I can feel it. When you've painted for long enough, you can feel when you're about to get a clog in your airbrush by the resistance and the trigger. Is that oil paint or water? This is water-based acrylics. 
simple stuff. What airbrush is this? It's the No Name Airbrush by Spray Gunner. It's called the No Name Airbrush. It's manufactured by the same company that makes the Iwata airbrushes, but it's not Iwata. But it has the same quality craftsmanship. Purple has some shading, and then I'm going to overlay the pink on top of it. Bunch of questions. Who inspired me? Um, a lot of people inspired me. Um, Airbrush-wise, Jamie Rodriguez, Jaime, Jaime Rodriguez. I realized I was pronouncing his name wrong for a long time. Jaime Rodriguez um, was a big inspiration to the style of script lettering that I do, and. He's the one that got me hooked on Badger airbrushes back in the day. And in the graffiti world, a lot of people have. Smo is a big influence. Rake 43. 43? I think it's, I always forget the number at the end of his name. Of course, Doke and Kipto and all those other people that I forget their names right now. All the big ones. But my Instagram profile is full of people, smaller graffiti artists who I am enjoy looking at their work. There's a lot of people. I don't know all their names. I definitely spend a good portion of time scrolling on Instagram for inspiration, looking at everybody else's artwork and graffiti pieces. What's up, big papa daddy Tulo? How do I feel about gravity fed airbrushes? Gravity fed airbrushes are great depending on what it is you're doing with them. Um, there's kind of different use cases for gravity fed versus siphon fed airbrushes. If you're doing t-shirts and you're going through a lot of paint and you don't need ridiculous precision, then siphon fed are better just because of the ease of use and cleaning and volume of paint and everything like that. But if you're going to do precise stuff, if you're going to work on helmets and cases and bikes and stuff like that, then you should use gravity fed because with gravity fed you can paint at much lower air pressures, which is good. I'm more comfortable with siphon fed just because I have a hundred times more experience with siphon fed than gravity fed and they're different to hold and stuff. But at the root of it, they're the same thing. You can do the same thing with both of them if you really wanted to. If you're going to paint t-shirts like as a business, you need to have several airbrushes and you might as well get siphon fed airbrushes and you should have like at least three of them, preferably like six or 30, um, kind of whatever. Hey Dale, is the six no name brushes for 300 from a spray gunner? Yes. I believe that is the right price. Which is a really good deal actually. It's way cheaper than all of my airbrushes cost. I am the spray gunner shop. I am not the spray gunner shop. It's not my store. I don't know what how long things are gonna take to ship. I can ask questions and I know a little about it a little bit about it because I just should, but it's not my store. That said, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. 
and I will I will ask them and I will learn those answers that are common so that I can tell you guys. Just know that I'm not shipping these products to you, it's not me. I'm glad you like the music. If they're comparable to Awada Eclipses, that's awesome. They are. Um, I've, I have some Awada Eclipses as well. They have the same cone style that you, you screw the cone on and off, which is different than, than the Omnis that I have been using if you're an OG. Um, but they seem to be a lot more resilient, and I've had to clean them way, way less because of that design. It's a little harder to clean them because you have to unscrew that cone, but you trade that out for not having to clean them, then that's pretty sweet. They have definitely just as much precision as these Omnis or the Eclipse that I have. Um, and it sprays a way stronger stream of paint. Like it just it seems like a more robust airbrush. I've been very happy with them. Have any advice for a person that is starting? Darren, you're all right. The siphon fed are the drop in. Um, but the gravity fed, or at least the one that I do have, is the screw on type. I prefer the drop in, and I wonder if later the no names will have an option for that. Um, I'm gonna talk to Artie at Spray Gunner and ask him about that, if there is like another production run later, if that can be something that can be in the works. That's the only thing I don't like about him, which isn't a big deal at all, is, is that it's not a drop-in nozzle. Do I have any advice for someone that is starting? Um, starting airbrushing, I would suggest that you do a bunch of exercises to get your airbrush control down. And once you have a little bit of control down with the airbrush, you need to draw what you know. Just keep on. It takes a lot of practice. It's like learning an instrument. You have to get familiar with this tool before you can really do anything too crazy. So keep it simple. Draw from what you know and practice. You'll do exercises like this. You'll be doing dagger strokes which are these pointed edges. If you can get this, every stroke that I do essentially is a dagger stroke. Whether it's a big one around a letter, it always ends in a stroke, or no matter what it does, these tapered lines are always what you're painting in. And notice that I keep the air down. I'm not painting and then letting go. I keep the air down the whole time and just use the trigger to control how much paint I'm getting. The first thing I would do if you picked up an airbrush for the first time is try to make a bunch of little tiny dots. Just hold your airbrush still, keep the air down, and pull back on this trigger until you start seeing a little bit of paint, and then push forward and just make little dots. And once you can make dots where you want to, start connecting those dots with a dagger stroke. And you just gain control of the airbrush, start varying the thickness of your line like this. And like you could spend a couple days just doodling and playing around. And once you have some control, start drawing what you already draw, what you already know, um, so that you can focus on gaining more control and not complicate things by trying to figure out artwork at the same time. And then practically, the best thing to do is develop some lettering, some simple script lettering or something, so that you can make some money with an airbrush. Do you prep the shirts? I don't prep the shirts beforehand at all. Um, but I heat press them, I cure them with a heat press at the end, it's a big iron that heats up to 350 degrees, clamp it down for about 20 seconds and that seals the paint in so it doesn't wash out. What's going on, ghost? 
twins. Molly, everybody's coming in. Hey, guys. All right, back of this one gets the same name. K-A-I-L-Y-N. Don't do that to me. Still got boogers in my airbrush, man. Took away the smoothness of my script. Come on. I think these boogers are actually in the paint, not in the airbrush. I got a gallon of black paint that's been sitting for like six months. And it's starting to get a little too old and I think it froze, which is not good. So it's been giving me some trouble. This is the part of every design that people go, it looks good until you did the outline, which I kind of agree that I wouldn't want to do an outline on it, but I've been a professional artist airbrush artist for a very long time and this is what people want the most people want so that's what we do all my graffiti people go that's dumb you shouldn't have done the outline i agree but all of the non-graffiti people go oh that's cool awesome that's sweet Is that manifold brush tough to maintain? No. Hughes on cue, get out of here. You were advertising your product yesterday, the tree of darts. Um, I looked it up. Nobody buy that product. Do, do, do. First of all, that product has nothing to do with airbrushing. Second of all, it is completely irrelevant and not something that you need as an artist. I don't know why you're trying to sell their product to airbrush people. Mega T2B. This one's gonna be cool. Yeah, but it's, your product has nothing to do with airbrushing. There's no use for that in what what I do at all. I do appreciate today that you're not a bot, that you're actually gonna have a conversation. But you're in here just hijacking a stream trying to sell your product. That has nothing to do with what I'm doing. That G is weird. Dylan's back. Yeah, you clearly don't even know anything about airbrushing.
I'm gonna like block you so that I don't have to focus on your stuff anymore. Oh, I can't from this window. You're lucky. I'll block you later. I do appreciate your creative username. Q's on Q is pretty good. I'll give you that. I understand what your product does. That's not, that we don't do that. I don't need per, like precise color mixing with syringes. I don't, it's just, it's not something that we use here. Do some slices. I don't want this to look like a J, so I need to. Not let it look like a J. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Is it better to do freehand or get some stencils to keep line work up? Stencils, um, there's a use for stencils. There's a, a time and a place for them. I don't like stencils because it takes way too much work to use a stencil properly and not get a bunch of overspray and you're limited to using your stencil exactly as it is. Um, the size of your artwork has to be exactly the same because that's the size of stencil it is in. I prefer to do things by hand to have the flexibility to change them up. I do use stencils, um, I don't know the word to use, I use them as like a, a, it gets the shape down, right, so I'll have like, I have a heart stencil and a cross stencil and some complicated shapes that I'll hold up the stencil and I'll just dust paint on it real quick and take it away and that'll just leave, leave like a ghost image of what it is and then I'll do the line work around that thing by hand, um, and that's for like, high quantity production work. I probably would never use a stencil for a one-off shirt ever. It would take me longer to cut the stencil than it would to paint the thing. And the line work would actually be cleaner if I did it by hand than if I used the stencil. Is my chat broken? It was broken. Okay, we're good. Now I gotta check up or catch up. Do I heat press the shirts after I do? What paint to use? Any kind of airbrush paint. Createx is good. Any kind of, um, these are water-based acrylic airbrush paints. Any kind of acrylic paint will work, um, but you need to reduce it, make it really nice and thin. Safety Paint says, our airbrushes with a color tank. I guess you're talking about this better for a fill. Yeah, because it holds a lot more paint and I can fill it a lot better and I can take it off and use a different color very easily. Skills gaming, not right now. Am I using a double action airbrush? Yes, every airbrush I will whoa, ever use is a double action airbrush. Um, a single action airbrush is like a spray can. You push down the trigger, paint comes out. 
and there's no varying the thickness of the line at all. It's just on or off, and that does not work for lettering or really for artwork at all unless you're filling in color or using stencils only or painting something completely a solid color. Um, if you want to start and stop your line and get tapered lines like I'm doing, you have to use a dual action airbrush. I'm still having problems with this. I don't want to stop and clean it right now. I'm almost out of black that's not been frozen. I'm gonna have to place an order soon. Mm, thank you, Kip Bricks. Kip Bricks. Alright, I'm going to do. I'm gonna do a gray drop shadow on this. Try not to use black anymore because my black's all messed up. Since will get you limited, yeah. and everything a little bit a little bit of an updated process i think it's a little more clear how to order and whatnot but it's back if everybody's been waiting holding their breath to order a shirt now you can do that there should be a link in the description unless i'm a dumb dumb and i didn't put one there which is very possible is I'll be painting a lot more live streams because I'll have a lot more orders to paint. I'm going to try to focus on this style in the live streams, but the script stuff um, is fun too because it's fast and satisfying. I got two moisture traps and still spitting out condensation. That sounds like a problem. I would, the first thing I would do is troubleshoot. Um, I would make sure that your moisture traps are in fact trapping moisture. You may have them installed upside down or something. Um, Either the moisture traps aren't working or aren't installed correctly in the right place or something, or your air compressor is in a lake, and that's not good. I don't know why it would... I would look at your moisture traps and see if there's any water collected in them. If they're not collecting water, but you're still spraying water, then something's wrong with them. I've never had a whole lot of trouble with moisture in my lines. My compressor's outside right now, and I've never had an issue with it. 
you might have to do a Google on what exactly is going on there. Does no name brand airbrush that you recommend do all that you need or do you need multiple airbrushes? I'm using the no name airbrushes right here. I only have one of them because I just have had these forever. But yes, it's just like these, it does everything you need. The only reason you would need more than one airbrush is if you're switching colors a whole lot like I am. Um, you only need one. I don't change settings, I don't change nozzle sizes or tip sizes. You don't need special caps like you do when you're doing graffiti art or spray can art. It's all the same airbrush, so no, you only need one. But it's convenient to have several once you really start getting into it. If you're doing t-shirts, I recommend having three, at least three, because you have one on black, one with white paint, and then one with a color. Um, when you switch colors, there's a little bit of color left over in the airbrush and the tube and whatnot that you have to spray out in order to switch to the next color without having like some overlay, over, I don't even know what to call it, some leftover paint in there, it blends together. So if you go from white to any other color, you have to really clean out that airbrush to make sure it's not gonna tint the white that you're using. The same with black, that black is so dark that if you go from black to any other color, it just looks black for a minute until you really clean it out. So for that reason, it's really important to have a black that works really well and stays black, because that's most of your line work. It's really important to have a white that stays nice and crisp and white, um, because it's hard to go from any color to white. And as long as you're pretty good with how you blend colors and switch colors, your, your third airbrush can switch from any color to any color pretty easy. You can get away with one. The more the merrier. Can join learning to make graffiti. Okay. I'm gonna blend some of this teal. This is that no name airbrush, but I think my teal paint is very thick right now, so it might act funny. At any given moment, there's probably something wrong with most of my airbrushes. I've learned to deal with the little issues that you get. Instead of cleaning stuff constantly, I just work around the little inconsistencies. The white highlights on this one are really gonna set everything off, I think, pretty well. Thank you, Jeff Fuller. I appreciate that. Legibility is something that I that I focus on. I want to add style to everything, but I also want it to be completely legible. And obviously, I'm not writing in like Times New Roman or nothing, so it takes a second to really to look at it if you're not used to looking at graffiti letters. But I think it's fair to say that if you actually try, you can read my stuff. That comes from just being a, a t-shirt artist for so long. And that style is cool, but a customer is never going to be happy if they can't read your shirt, no matter how interesting it looks. As the artist, though, sometimes it's, it's, you always know what you're painting, what you're writing. So sometimes you can get a little wild with a letter and not realize it's so crazy to other people.
In typical Dale fashion, I forgot to make Dylan a mod yesterday. Alright, see you later, twins. Thanks for hanging out. I think it's gonna be the last shirt. What time is it? It's three. It's only three o'clock. start back up an old clothing line clothing line I guess uh, that I had almost made a while back called ascendant apparel it came to me last night I forgot all about it until last night and it might be a good opportunity for me to make merch that doesn't just say Dale you know, it says something that stands for something and means something. So I might do that. I'll have to find some of the old designs. They're probably really bad. But... I figure if I want to make clothing and designs that are focused around a single word, or may not focus around a single word, but focused around a word that I can write that is universal, not customized for every person, then it has to be something that has meaning to it. It has to be a purpose for that word. And ascendant has some meaning to it. Talking about an elevated state of awareness and understanding. With specific implications for the Christian faith, however, accommodating to secular and other religious people as well can be appreciated by everybody. But Christians will find a, a extra and special relevance. I think it would be cool. <laughs> Lots of people online today. Yeah, there is. Appreciate you guys. And I agree, you should subscribe. Um, matter of fact, you should be a member. Mm. I need to do more shout-outs and recognition and con com yeah, content for my members. I've got like 15 members. You guys are supporting me for, 50, for $2 a month. Style seems your favorite word to go to. Yeah, style was the word I was painting a lot just because it's universal and means nothing and it's got a short five letter word. It seems, style's almost too generic though. It's not like, I don't know. I'm gonna bust out the splatter thing. I'm going to start doing, um, what am I saying? Some, yeah, some of the live streams that I'm going to do when I'm doing more special projects are going to be members only, um, chat. Everybody can watch. But so that I can focus on what I'm painting and only answer, like, important questions and stuff and have some meaningful conversation, there'll be members only chat ones. I've got a couple of cool projects I'm thinking about. One of them is a skateboard deck and I'm collaborating with somebody on hopefully soon and just some other little stuff. I think I'll, I think I'm going to do a series of skateboard decks because I have a couple and they're fun to paint on. 
Mini Giles. Thank you, sir, for becoming a member. I appreciate that, man. See? The real MVP right there. Mini Giles. Now, Mini Giles will be able to chat in my members only chat. Date TBD. There'll be some new perks too. Once I finally have some merch up and whatnot, members will get discounts on merch and they'll get, I don't know, whatever it is that I should do. I want to make it worth it for you guys. I think we're good here. I think this one's done. Maybe it needs an outline. I'll do a, do a solid white outline. It'll be fine. Hello, Jania. Thank you, Michael. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the equipment that I, that's in that starter kit, feel free to reach out. Like I said before, it's not my store. I don't own Spray Gunner. I don't ship your item, but I did help curate that kit. And if that's not what you're talking about, you're actually talking about a t-shirt, then for sure. I'll paint one for you. No color burst outline? Maybe you're right. This white isn't as standing out as much as I thought. I do have to finish the white first and then I'll do color. Because if I paint a color over the white lines that I painted, it'll look different than the plain white t-shirt. You can see this white highlight through the color. Kind of like writing with a, with a white crayon and then coloring over it with a different crayon. You can see the white crayon. So to be consistent, I need to finish this line first. I'm gonna go with that teal color. I would like to add like an orange to this, or something that would pop out, but the customer was specific with what he wanted and I can't just add random colors to a thing. I appreciate that, old stonerd. Also, I have, I still have to take that picture of that piece I did for you the other day. I'll do that today. After this live stream, I'll do that right away. Unless I forget, in which case I won't. But I will try my best. right behind me. I just need to remember to do it. That looks better. I think that is cool. Let's do some splatter too. talking about stencils earlier I like using stencils for texture easy way to get some good texture and stuff I don't like using stencils for the main elements of the design playlist. I need to add more to this. Alright. Ouch. I think that'll do it. Dylan says, meanwhile, Banks sees all stencils. That's true, but that's because he goes 
and Prelite throws a piece in like nine seconds and disappears. I've never seen lettering from him. Does he do letters at all? The piece that comes to mind is his balloon. Are you on Streamlab? I am. That's what I'm using right now. There's a link in the description uh, to where you can get Streamlab Premium for a discount and make me a little bit of a commission. Streamlab's pretty cool. Um, it allows me to stream to all of my places at one time. There are different options for doing that. I use stream elements. I've used um. I forget. There's a couple of different streaming services that do it, but I like Streamlab the most. It integrates with everything a lot easier. Price was better. There's apps that plug in. It plugs in straight to OBS. They have their own OBS app, which uh, was way easier than setting that up individually, which I've done many times. Streamlabs is pretty sweet. Mark, you can do it. Keep going. Thank you, guys. I think I'm going to move on to another thing. I like it. I think this is a really fun one. I'm going to try to make a, a video from the live stream content, I think. Like, I'll take it and I'll reformat it so that it's a quicker video. Whoa. My phone's about to die. That's done. That was sweet. Let's do one more thing. One more thing. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Hi, David. I'm going to paint the word A-S-C-N-D to see what it looks like. I was thinking about the Ascendant brand again. Um, and Ascendant is too many letters for graffiti style. So I'm going to shorten it, which I don't know how I feel about shortening words to... This is an experiment. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Dylan. Um, little Bean down the street. It's really good coffee, man. Go there. I'm gonna start with this blue because that blue was doing work. A S C N D. Is that how I want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> See it. 
<laughs> you have a, literally have a gift card. I've got so many gift cards for Little Bean for Christmas. Every time we go somewhere, it's like, all right, we're stopping by Little Bean. I like to combine really sharp corners, like these, with super round shapes, like that. I'd like to, I've been trying to change my S's up. Usually but the S is, um, a really big middle section and instead of that I want to have a really big top and bottom section and a small little middle section but every time I do that I end up running out of room I need to I need to practice some S's just can't get the flow right without sketching a lot I will get it. It will happen. I know this looks messy right now. It's not for you yet. I can see it. Just kidding, it's always for you. Um. This A is too rambunctious. So the plan for um, developing merch clothing designs for this Ascendant Apparel brand is that I would start by doing exactly what I'm doing right now, airbrushing something, and then I would take a picture and turn it into a digital design on my tablet, my iPad. Because I always, I work best, I sketch best right here with the airbrush. If I was doing this, with a pencil, it just wouldn't be as smooth. It, I don't have muscle memory. I work faster and better with an airbrush than I do with anything else. But, of course, for merch, you really need to have a nice, clean digital design. So, step one, this. Step two, procreate. And it'll be super cool and dope. Zeno, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I mean, it's okay. I don't like the shape of it. But if I brought that into Procreate, I could change that. I'm going to put this line here to continue that in down. Now 
Now I've got so many blue lines in the middle because of the sketch lines that I have to use blue as my fill color. I don't care about overspray. I don't care about a clean edge on this case because again it's going to be digital later and because I'm just painting on a piece of paper. If I was painting on a t-shirt I wouldn't be able to just do this because that overspray would get all over that shirt. It would get caught in the little ridges on the neck and the collar and the sleeves and stuff. I'd have to be way more careful but that does not apply in this situation. I'm going to tint these edges with a dark purple. This is blue. I'm going to tint these edges with a dark purple. And then I'm going to come back with a lighter fuchsia color between that purple and the blue. Pellon is good. Can't seem to get it this side of the pond. I'm sure you can. Pellon is a um, it's a screen printing thing. They're screen printing everywhere. Um, maybe instead of searching for Pellon, search for screen print test squares. That's what these are. I don't know if they're made out of Pellon or not. Uh, but screen print test squares is where I've found what I'm painting on right now. I had been searching for Pellon for years, you know, and that's what I would buy until I realized that either this is an alternative to that or just a better search term for it or whatever it is. Screen print test squares. I'm sure something will pop up. I'm gonna put a little bit of pink in here because it's gonna flow really well and blend everything, kind of. Flow really well, he says, as it doesn't flow at all. You look a little like Chris Tom, Tomlin, Chris Tomlin. Hey Rob Fox. I don't know what Chris Tomlin or Tomlin look like. Learning about the edge ridge catching of paint. Yes, it's called overspray, and it'll ruin a T-shirt quick. All right, I'm going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a thing. The best part about painting on this Pellon screen print test squares is how crisp these white lines can be on it in one stroke. A couple months ago, everybody told me uh, I looked like Mr. Beast, so I had to get a haircut and shave. I didn't know who he was at that time.
Guys, my most popular YouTube video just hit 47 million views. That's ridiculous. That's dumb ridiculous. It's not that good of a video. It's like my least favorite video. How come you guys never watch the videos that I like? That I put time and effort into? I will spend a full day editing something and it gets like 2,000 views after a month. I'll post something that I recorded, didn't edit at all, it's 60 seconds long, and it's a dumb shirt that I almost just threw away the video and it gets 47 million views. <laughs> Dead. Again, I should have used a different color for this outline. Alright guys, um, I think it's time. We had a good time today. Hi! Hi! Noah's here everybody. I'll be inside in a minute, okay bud? Nose woke up from his nap, everybody. Alright. Yeah, I think I'm done. I'm gonna use this to make a design. Maybe I might just throw it away. Who knows? But, uh, at least I did a thing. If you're looking to start airbrushing, there's a link in the description to those kits. Um, now is the time. The compressor still isn't in stock as of this very moment. Um, but if you already have a compressor or you just want to get your own compressor, you're good to go. I think they said the compressor should be back by like the 7th or something. Um, who knows. But, that said, thank you guys. And uh, I will see you next time. I appreciate you hanging out. This was a fun day. I like this stream. Love you guys. See you later.